maybe indie labels are the music market. <laughs> and what is an indie label? Is XL an indie label? And 4AD and Rough Trade, are these indie labels, they're part of the Bagus group, is that still an indie group? I don't think so. It should be their role, it should be the role of an indie label to find the cool artists everyone is afraid to put money in. That's what it should be. But at the moment, it isn't. Even the indie labels are playing the safe game. They're putting money in stuff that sounds like stuff that is successful. And they're putting money in stuff they, they're used to hear. It's been a while that I saw a record label putting money and time at work in a, in a kind of music that didn't exist before. Every young German band is trying to adapt the sound of 15 years ago. It's so sad. Really, there's no riot going on. There's nothing that is controversial in any way. I think all these young kids by just having a riot maybe in the books or in their heads or so, I think that's enough. It's enough wearing a t-shirt that says something. Have the courage to try new things and do not try to adapt old stuff and try not to sound like something you like. I mean, of course you should sound like something you like, but not like a band you like. I want some crazy stuff going on. I started like 20 years ago maybe, play music and I got signed to Sony for a couple of years with a, with a band that didn't do very well when we were very young but after that I started to record my own music, recorded other people's music, set up my first studio. I can't really remember how I started. It feels like it's always been in my head, that technical side of, of music. Plenty musicians got bigger, my skills got better, and I started a label in 2009, just for vinyl, just for seven inches. I realized that this is really something I just want to do for the rest of my life. On a day-to-day -day basis, it's, it's music production really for me. I, I just spend all my time in the studio working with musicians, producing music. Of course, I talk to the people who work in the label and in the publishing and the management because we, we always talk about music and they, it's all in the same place. So they will come over to me in the studio and we talk about the production. It's like all little pieces that exist in the music industry at one place. That sounds like a nightmare for a music producer to have an A&R have 100% access to the studio, but it's actually a good thing because we're communicating all the time. There are two stages. First stage, I contact bands or bands contact me. We talk about production and if I love them, I'll try to get them onto the label. I did it for a couple of years to A&R records and produce them. And it's really a bad idea. I produce, I give it to the label people and say, what's it worth, pretty much. And uh, it's always, it's very unromantic. It's, it's always a process of, we want to do something we love, but it needs to sell. Nowadays, Many artists don't see the need of a producer in music because they think on the technical side they can do everything themselves. They have the skills, they have the gear, and they think, okay, it's easy to do it. But what they forget is that the most important role of a producer is not being in the band and have the overall look from the outside and have the skills to lead the band in a certain direction. And it's exactly the same with a record label, or with a management company, or with a publishing company. They are just someone from the outside that is able to see the whole thing from a bird's eye perspective. Artists keep asking me, how much money do you need to have to record? And I can't answer that question because I recorded great music in three days. You know, for example, a band like Bosnian Rainbows. They recorded that record in three days. That's it. Bam because they can. We spent one day sound checking and then it's just a matter of 45 minutes to play that record. But then there are bands 
um, other bands that want to spend time and are funded by big companies, so like come in for six weeks and they're recording a record in six weeks, also possible, also cool. And then there are other bands with no budget at all, but I love the music and of course I try to make it possible, however, you know, if I might, I might sign them to the label and get the label to pay it, I might sign them for publishing or for management and try to make it happen just, yeah, just for them to make it possible, really. There's always a way, there's always a way. Pete is, is a punk, not in, in musical terms, but in attitude terms, and that's that's the interesting thing about him. On one hand, uh, working with them, that, it makes it really interesting. But for me, as a producer, I think, I think Pete is a really, really, really strong songwriter for his solo projects. I'm not the biggest fan of the Libertines, I must admit, and I'm not the biggest fan of the Baby Shambles, but I'm a huge fan of his songwriting. And when we met, and he asked me to produce his record. I, I put him in the studio and said, you just play me every song you have that is new, never been recorded. And then he sat down in the studio and played like 20 songs and that was magical. I met James Johnson of Gallon Drunk uh, years ago when I started working with Faust the German crowd rock band because he was part of that at that time and they came to my studio and we did a record together and we became friends and then I saw Gallen Drunk on one of the avant-garde festivals in northern Germany I just talked to them and they are like a furious live band I said like hey guys if you ever want to do a new record I'm I would love to produce it. And then we met and then we started working together and now I'm producing a solo record, which we're gonna put out end of the year. The advantage of the production was that we really like each other. So we became friends and we were able to talk really honestly and really straight to each other. And I, you know, it doesn't help not saying the truth in the production process. So when they played me demos, I just said, hey guys, I think that's, it's not a good song. Let's not do it, <laughs> you know? And then I picked the ones I liked and we talked about the ones. And then James said, yeah, but let's do that one. I like that about it. And so we really worked on the songs, especially on the second record. There are some quiet songs on the second record we did together that, that were originally meant as a rock piece. And like in, in some morning, James came to the studio and just showed the chords to the sax player, Terry. And I listened to it and said, hey, that's a really beautiful song. And James was like, no, 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 no. It's supposed to be a rock song. Just imagine a band and going really banging it. I'm like, no, 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 it's not, it's not a rock song. It's a ballad. It's what it is. It's exactly what you're playing right now. And he was very, very irritated. But then we tried it and now it's a ballad. I think it's the most beautiful song now. And that's, you know, if you like each other and if you trust each other, maybe that's just the secret. We're gonna put out the Pete Doherty solo record worldwide. We're gonna put out the James Johnston solo record worldwide. And then we signed a new band from Ireland called Cyan Hill. Two guys, they're 20 years old. They write super cool pop songs, timeless pop songs. And I try to produce it in a modern way, like sandwich technique, like do the drums first, then bass and stuff. It didn't work out at all. I have to throw it everything away, delete the whole production. And then found a band, put them all in the same room. And they recorded the whole record, live to 24 track, including singing, in like a week or so. And we're going to put it out and we try to promote it as like pop music, really popular music. And we want to sell millions, of course. But those guys are really interesting. It's a great mixture of young guys playing timeless music, recorded in a very old school way. So those guys are gonna be really interesting this year. Okay, very cool. <laughs>